The leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, has been killed in a U.S. drone strike in Afghanistan over the weekend. President Joe Biden says he gave the final approval for the high-precision strike and that al-Zawahiri's killing means justice has been delivered. Al-Zawahiri was an Egyptian surgeon who grew up in a comfortable Cairo household before turning to violent radicalism. He took over al-Qaeda after Osama bin Laden was killed by U.S. Special Forces in Pakistan in 2011. Al-Zawahiri had been on the run for 20 years since the 9-11 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people in the United States. On Saturday, at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan, that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. He made videos, including the recent weeks, calling for his followers to attack the United States and our allies. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. This mission was carefully planned rigorously minimize the risk of harm to other civilians. And one week ago, after being advised that the conditions were optimal, I gave the final approval to go get him. And the mission was a success. None of his family members were hurt, and there were no civilian casualties. After relentlessly seeking Zawahiri for years under Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump, our intelligence community located Zawahiri earlier this year. He had moved to downtown Kabul to reunite with members of his immediate family. After carefully considering the clear and convincing evidence of his location, I authorized a precision strike that would remove him from the battlefield once and for all. Well, this is a big scalp for President Biden to have been the one to capture. You'll remember President George W. Bush talking about we're going to smoke them out of their holes like something out of a bad mm. Western movie. But it was actually Obama that got Osama, and now al Zawahiri has perished on President Biden's instruction. But what's interesting for me is that the, what we're told is that two Hellfire Ninja missiles were fired from a CIA drone and completely vaporized the man as he stood on his balcony without harming a hair on anybody else's head. That, for mm. me, is amazing. I'm thinking... Does Nigeria have the capacity to make similar investments? We clearly need this in our own fight against terror. And for me, it's also good news for us in this part of the world because obviously we're under this huge onslaught, aren't we? But it just goes to show this attack, successful attack, was six months planning for 20 years in the making. So while it looks as if there's no progress being made, nothing is happening, there could be stuff going on underground that we're not aware of until we just wake up one day to great news. I'm hoping here, as I tend to. I always try and find you know, some positivity in a situation. So fingers crossed for us as well. And it's also just good to know that no matter how far, how long it takes, that justice will be done. You cannot go around killing people. This man is responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. And he was there living his life, hanging out with his family, when he has denied other people that opportunity. So this, for me, is sort of really heartening news for us as we battle a similar situation here in Nigeria. And, well, for Joe Biden, it's great news, although I'm not sure what impact this will have in the U.S. midterms in November. I'm not sure, because America really is groaning under the weight of inflation. You know, those immortal words of James Carville, the economy is stupid. It's always about the economy. So I don't know if voters will really care that much at this point. And it also points to the Taliban, the relationship the Taliban has with America, where America felt that Taliban will share intelligence. Apparently that has not happened. They had to go it on their own, so they really cannot be trusted. Yeah. Iman uh, Azawahiri was a uh, deputy to uh, Osama bin Laden, who was killed 11 years ago. And he was uh, said to have been one of the masterminds of the terror attack, the 9-11 terror attack, uh, which was... Uh, you know, a major tragedy for the uh, United States, resulting in the death of so many. It was also Zawahiri uh, that masterminded the bombing of uh, the USS Cole, and he was also responsible for the killing of many, you know, Americans uh, around the world. And, uh, you know, he made it to the FBI's most wanted list of terrorists. And, you know, uh, what has now happened is, um, is killing uh, it's a triumph, not just for the United States, but also a triumph for efforts to counter terror in any part of the world. It sends uh, a strong signal out there, as uh, President Biden himself reiterated, 
that no matter how long it takes, wherever a terrorist may be, they will not go unpunished. And that is what uh, America has done, affirming its supremacy, affirming its determination to ensure that uh, you know, no American life is lost in vain and that justice is delivered. Of course, this will cause a lot of excitement, and it has among Americans, uh, with uh, the vi U.S. Vice President also hailing this as a major you know, achievement in the war against terror. But whether it will have a political advantage uh, for President Biden or for his party in the midterm elections, well, you know, it's difficult to predict that. But of course, you know, American exceptionalism, America's uh, strength has been uh, reaffirmed. And it was an operation that lasted six months and delivered with precision. So whether it's Osama bin Laden or Zawahiri or any other terrorists out there, at least the United States has been able to prove the point that, well, America would one day, you know, get you. Another point that was made is that, you know, Afghanistan will not be allowed to become, again, a terrorist safe haven. Uh, and, of course, that's also a message uh, to the Af Afghanistan uh, authorities, you know, uh, that, look, wherever any terrorist is in that environment, you know, the CIA uh, will still come after such a person. So I think, yes, you have a good point there about is there something that uh, other countries like Nigeria can learn from this? In Nigeria here, people give their chieftaincy titles to terrorists. Okay? I keep saying, we hope we will not wake up one day and we will see some uh, uh, rehabilitated terrorists on the national honors uh, list, right? We see uh, the government uh, adopting the policy of appeasement and claiming that these terrorists, if they have repented, uh, they will be forgiven. And we keep making the point that people who are responsible for the killing, for the murder of innocent Nigerians, of thousands of Nigerians, do not deserve chieftaincy titles. They deserve exactly, you know, this kind of treatment, you know, that the Americans continue to meet out to those who compromise the integrity and, the, you know, the, the lives of uh, Americans. So no life is more important than the other. And uh, the president of the United States, President Biden, made a point. He said as commander-in-chief, he has a responsibility to protect the lives of all Americans. Okay, because I, I saw a line like that. He's, he's taking responsibility for it. He's reaffirming his duty as the number one citizen in the United States. That's also a line, I think, that should resonate with other leaders around the world to realize that your primary duty is the security and welfare of your people and that where they are in danger in any part of the world, nobody who endangers their lives should be allowed to go scot-free. Absolutely. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission says more than 11 million citizens have been <coughs> added to their voter register. Data obtained from INEC as of August the 1st revealed that 8.7 million of them are youths, while more than 87,000 are persons with disabilities. But the voter registration, which ended at the weekend, has often been held up by logistical challenges and by allegations that registration officers have been exploiting those trying to register. And now there are loud calls for the registration exercise to be extended, with a coalition of lawyers threatening legal action against the Electoral Commission, INEC, over the issue. But INEC insists that the exercise is over and that it now has to focus on other things. And, and for more on this, Arise News turns the Chief Press Secretary to the Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Rutsumi Uyekami. We introduce another aspect that wasn't introduced before, that's the online pre-registration. And it was part of the lessons we learned from the last exercise we conducted between 2017 and 2018. And we felt that uh, in response to modern times and in... Um, our own way of deepening the use of technology, we decided to take it online. So you could, from the comfort of your room, do what we call pre-registration online. You upload your data and your information, but you will still be required to complete the process at the registration mm. So you still have to go in. You still have to right. go in. But when you go in, you don't waste too much time because all the, all the efforts are there. And 
when we started, we tried as much as possible to sensitize Nigerians on the need to register quickly, you know. Um, in the first three months when we started, we started June 2021, the opening three months, people were coming in three quotes. Mm. And we, I remember that on more than four occasions over the next six months, the INEC chairman appealed to Nigerians not to wait till the last minute uh, to register. But unfortunately, I think that warning or that advice was not taken. And what we then found was that the original deadline, which mm. we set, uh, June 30th, original deadline, which we set, was far back as uh, June uh, 2021, when we released the timetable for the CVR that, you know, we will do this, we will do this, and then on June 30th, we will, we will have to shut down for so, so, and so reasons. Uh, then about two, three weeks before then, mm. you had a mass of people now turning up to, to uh, register. It's our joy at the commission if people come to register because democracy is about numbers. And the more people participate, the more legitimate the person who gets elected will be. But unfortunately, uh, the pressure on our centers that uh, was mounted towards the end was so overwhelming that we were barely gasping for breath. Yeah, but that's precisely the point, isn't it? I mean, you, you must know, having done this over many years, that people, and that's the way people are, it doesn't matter which country it is, people tend to concentrate their efforts towards the end of an exercise. There's always a crush of people who come over. I mean, you, you're aware of that. Why is it that you never make provision for the fact that there are going to be a lot of people coming over towards the end of the exercise? If, if you recall, uh, when, we, when we started noticing that pressure, mm. we deployed more in voter enrollment devices, which we used to register, to some places we identified, like Lagos, like Kanu, like the FCT. In fact, all the states in the southeast, we deployed more machines. But I think the more machines we deployed, the more people that, uh, you know, tend to turn up at such... Well, according to INEX timetable, publication of the official register of voters will be on the 12th of January, and they're citing Section 10, Subsection 4 of the Electoral Act. So this will be the official registered voter. But speaking of the elect Electoral Act amendment, of course, um, Section 9, Subsection 6 says, registration of voters, updating and revision of the register of voters shall stop not later than 90 days before any election covered by the Act. I want to read it exactly as it says. Talking about 90 days before the election, takes us somewhere in November. So according to this, on the face of it, registration should continue to November. But it's not about registration, is it? There's no point registering if you don't get a PVC. So INEC must have time after the registration to get you your PVC. It's not about just having your name on the roll. Then you go, you show up at the polling station, and you can't register because you don't have a PVC. And INEC has said that PVCs will be ready in October, November, which is exactly why INEC is stopping the process now, so that those who have registered now have reached the cutoff, to give them enough time for them to actually get their card in their hand, because all this must stop in November. So they are trying not to flout the Electoral Act. But the fact that there's this phalanx of lawyers going to court, they must have a case to argue, otherwise they will not be going to court. So maybe they have an alternative interpretation, which I'll be very interested to hear. But I can see, just on the face of it, our next argument, their rationale. Yes, you know, of course, that the extension was granted uh, by INEC following a court case. The uh, registration process originally was uh, meant to end uh, at the end of June, June 30. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, uh, SERAP, then decided to approach the court uh, to get an injunction to compel INEC to continue with the registration exercise. And that was why INEC then announced an extension by one month. So the uh, registration exercise ended, or you know, by the INEX uh, new uh, you know extension on July 30. But even with that July 30 uh, deadline, there have been issues. For example, you know, um, complaints about fake INEC registration centers. For example, one was uh, identified. Only God knows how many more existed in the course of that exercise. Two machines not being enough and malfunctioning. Three, the capacity of the machines. One particular machine, we're told, can only uh, register about 100 plus persons. 
uh, you know, uh, per day. And because of that, you know, and given the number of persons who trooped out, many people uh, were disturbed that they could not, uh, you know, get uh, their registration done. Even in the face of that, some states like Katsina, like Lagos, like Quara, you know, announced holidays, public holidays, just for people to go and get their voters' uh, cards. So uh, what we see here is how, you know, this 2023 uh, general election is an election like no other. People, you know, are very passionate about it. Uh, you know, the enthusiasm is on a very high level. However, this registration exercise began in June 2021. But, you know, as is typically uh, the Nigerian way, people had to wait till the last minute last before minute people started <laughs> rushing out and that contributed to the problem. So, on one hand, INEC having issues of uh, logistics. Second, the people, you know, coming to the party uh, rather late in the day. Now, I agree that the explanation that has been given by INEC will seem plausible because, as I said, the INEC uh, 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 representative in Abuja once pointed out, he said, look, registering is just one leg of the process. After registering, there are other processes. And this is basically what Dr. Festus Okoye and Rotimi Oyekomi have repeated in the last few days. That first, the uh, new uh, and old register will have to be reconciled. Issues regarding multiple registration. Maybe there are many Nigerians out there, uh, you know, who attempted multiple registration. They will have to harmonize uh, the uh, record. Then, of course, the register have, will have to be published, the new register, you know, for public scrutiny. And that's why they're mentioning October, you know, September, October, as a possible date for doing that. And then after that, there is also another process of correcting the register again, and then getting the PVC uh, ready. What uh, one INEC official said the other time is that, in fact, most people who register now, late in the day, may not be able, because of these other processes, may not be able to vote in the 2023 uh, general elections, uh, you know, just a few months down the line. So from point of view of process and logistics, INEC is insisting on a cutoff point. But the rule here is that can you legitimately deny their right of franchise, their right to vote? And that's what, you know, uh, Serap uh, brought up the other time. And these other civil society groups, that's the argument they are likely to put forward. Well, of course, it's called continuous voters registration. So the best that can happen is that the voters registration may continue, right? But at the end of the day, those persons who are just uh, who would register, if it so happens that there is any further extension, it's so clear that many people would not be able uh, to uh, vote in the 2023 election. The second question, therefore, will be: Is there some magic about this process? Is there a way in which you know INEC can take a second look or fast track its processes so that these Nigerians? You know, uh, those who have turned 18, those who have damaged PVCs, who are, you know, collecting new ones, who would want to vote in the 2023 election, will be given the opportunity to do so. But to tell the people that, oh, because of logistics, because of the process involved, uh, then you cannot register, uh, that may be a big issue. I just mind. It's a difficult pill to swallow when people are clearly so passionate about having their say in the future of their country. Well, we shall see. That's all on the news headlines.